Welcome, welcome, welcome. Merrill Chandler here, your host of the Get Fundable podcast. Ah, today, I've done research everywhere and nobody's talking about this. And I, I don't understand why I'm the only one who can see, connect these dots and see what the travesty that's happening with regards to some credit reporting issues. When we get back, from the uh, uh, when we get back, we're going to be talking about what we call a rolling charge off, and how destructive it is to your profile or any profile that comes in contact with. So, I'll see you in a moment. In the constantly changing world of fundability, the big question is this: How are entrepreneurs and real estate investors like us? Ones who want to grow our businesses and who are tired of paying for really expensive alternative lending? How do we tap into the most inexpensive money available and do it without the hassle of typical borrowing? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. Welcome to the Get Fundable Podcast with your host, Merrill Chandler. Rolling charge-offs. What do I mean by a rolling charge-off? Well, first of all, let's talk a little bit and uh, 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 let's talk about what a charge-off is, what it means to your credit profile, etc. But this is going to be a visual uh, alert. If you can watch this on you, our YouTube channel, if you can watch this at getfundablepodcast.com, it will be valuable to see. I will speak plainly and clearly. So those of you who are uh, on audio will be able to uh, uh, understand what we're talking about. But if you can watch it, I'm telling you, it's going to add a whole new layer to your understanding. So let's get let's get into it. Um, what is a charge off? So in the account degradation process, when an account degrades from paid as agreed, right, your current, it goes 30 days late, 60 days late, 90 days late. And by the way, anything after 60 days late, FICO grades as a serious delinquency. If you have two 30-day lates, it equals a 60-day late. So that's the two 30s are a serious delinquency. So it does accumulate. It aggregates how many days late you've been. So it goes 30 days, 60 days, 90 days late, and then somewhere around 90 days or 120 days late, then, then a lender many times will charge off the 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 debt that you owe okay a couple of things are important to understand about this charging it off does not mean you don't owe it charging it off means they're going to put it as a loss on their taxes so just like we as uh, as entrepreneurs small business owners we have our income and then we have our expenses then we have uh, our assets people owe us money and so the money you owe your lender would be an asset on their uh, balance sheet. But if you st stop paying them and they can't collect it, it ends up as a write-off. So they charge it off, they write it off on their taxes. Now, what when they write it off on their taxes that they're looking at, says that you still owe the money, but you are incapable of paying it and they, they'd rather write it off on their taxes. Now, what this means, however, is that you're in a position, they might send you a 1099 miscellaneous income for, for a, a tax form saying, hey, you borrowed $12,000, you didn't pay the $12,000 back, so I want to write that off and charge it to you because somebody's got to pay for it on their taxes. And if they're writing it off, that means they may be sending that income to you and they're passing along the tax liability. Does that make sense? They're passing the tax liability to you because the, the money was there, you used it, you didn't pay it back. So they're going to send you a 1099 saying you received miscellaneous income. Now, having said that, Let's go to what a charge-off looks like. So I'm, I'm going to pull up an example here 
on, uh, uh, what a charge off looks like um, on a my FICO report. Now, this is a Sally May, which it means it's a student loan. And notice it's uh, Equifax, uh, TransUnion, and Experian are all reporting this as charged off. They have different language for it, but uh, but it is relatively the same. So it's a bad debt, uh, a, a charge off or other derogatory bad debt or collection. And the balance is for $12,286. All right. Now, in the world of charge offs, and this is really important, you guys, in the world of charge offs, a charge off means that they cut it off. You're not 30, 60, 90, 120, 180, and late forever and ever. Charging it off means that it's a fixed in time. It's They're taking it off the books and it stops. It's negative. It stops accruing negative impact against your profile and against your score. So in this case, it was charged off in 2020, but as I'm going to show you right now, there is an additional set that FICO is showing. If you take a look at the what's on your screen, notice going backwards, January of 2021 through December of 2021, Experian and Equifax both show CO, charge off. But here's the problem. It was charged off. Look at 2020. For those who are looking, um, for those who can't see, what we're looking at is a 24 month look back period that starts the last payment was made on this student loan in April of 2020. Last payment was made and it says okay under uh, under April of 2020. Then in May of 2020 it says it was charged off. Now the only there is only possible the way the credit system works the way charge offs works the way everything works is that charge off can only be listed once on your credit profile and as we saw in that previous screen it says charged off is bad debt it was charged off on may of 2020 but you guys notice what for those of you who can see it and for those you can't see i'll describe it to you may june july august september october november december of of the rest of the year of 2020 and the entire year of 2021 all have CO on the Experian and the Equifax um, uh, lines. That means a fresh charge off of this account is being graded against this profile every single month. There should have only been one charge off, May of 2020. It should have stopped there, and then NR, not rated, should be the, the, the only listing. If you look at TransUnion, TransUnion says not rated for the entire period. TransUnion charged it off and is not grading it at all. But Equifax and Experian, each of them are showing that a brand new charge off of this account continues to grade against the, this profile. That is not legal. It's not accounting accurate, like the, the general uh, accounting principles, GAP. The general accounting principles, it's against GAP rules. It's against everything. This is a, this is a credit reporting mistake. Now, fixing this, is it is a minefield because you have to that you have to coordinate between credit bureaus and the original uh, owner of this in this case it was Sally May there's a whole bunch of things that you have to do to fix this but i wanted to bring this up and tell you remind you that since each one of these Equifax and TransUnion the scores for Equifax and, and Experian are significantly lower than TransUnion why because the score sees that a brand new charge off is occurring every single month when it should have stopped back in May of 2020. That's almost 15 months of bad credit reporting. So huge issue. And this is not uncommon, but, but my job is to share with you what the problem is and why it's a problem, right? If you have more than one CO on any of your 24 month look back periods, if there's three, if there's seven, if there's, in this case, there's 15 of them, it is, you've got 
to handle that because this gen uh, this gentleman's scores were in the low 500s and TransUnion was in the low 600s, almost a hundred points. There's about an 85 point difference between where they're showing the charge offs and TransUnion who charged it off once and now it's been aging. It's been aging for almost a full 24 month look back period to gather back the points as we know, as I've described in other um, episodes of the podcast. The longer it's been since we did a negative behavior, the less it counts against us. But here, these rolling charge-offs continue to count as a fresh charge-off every single month. And this, uh, and the last credit report, now we're moving into 2022. The credit report was pulled in January of 20. Uh, 2022, so it only shows the previous months. If we watch this, these these problems would continue to report for the in, for all of 22 as well. Because once it, it's a it's a glitch in the system, I do not believe for a second that any of this is intentional. It's been reported correctly, but it's in a continuous loop to to add this new charge off for every single month that elapses. It has to be fixed manually. It can't, uh, 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 I have never, ever, ever had a dispute successfully remove this. It's always a series of phone calls saying the right things to the right people to get the reporting fixed so that the charge off, um, uh, so that the charge off is um, uh, uh, reported only once the in it during the month that it was actually charged off one of this occurred so so true story um one of my um what is one of my valet clients and now a good friend of mine mark he had this very problem that was keeping him from buying his dream home on the beach in monterey bay uh, in california and so we went through this exact process we've done it with literally oh, probably over a hundred clients because it is a common error, but a regular dispute letter will not fix it. You guys. Right. And we need to know more details. I would love to say, take these five points. I'd love to tell you the five points in order to handle it. That is not the case. If you have such, if you have a problem like this, if you'd like someone to weigh in on that, then to follow the, the link below and uh, fill out an application so that we can collect some data for you and get a strategy session and see how you might need to solve this particular problem. But the bottom line is, is that if you see more than one charge off, red alert, red alert, uh, it, it's a it, red alert because it is not legal for them to change it. But again, as I've said, um, I haven't seen a, a, a one dispute letter say, I'm sorry, it's illegal for you to have more than one charge off. There's nothing for them to verify. You have to, this is a manual change. But in the case of Mark, literally after a few phone calls and, and implementation of these advanced strategies, he was able to qualify the, 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 the rolling charge offs were removed. And each one of those, um, his score jumped up like 150 points. His fundability was immediately because there was nothing else wrong but this one charge off, which is four years old and was paid in full and was rectified. But the charge off on his credit profile looked just like you saw here on just like, you, but it, for four years, the entire most recent 24 look, month look back had charge offs every single month. So this is what we've got to fix. This is how we fix it. And so uh, check in and fill out an app for a, for a strategy session if you'd like to, to investigate what's going on with your particular profile and how we can address this. This is Merrill Chandler, your host of the Get Fundable podcast. Please like, love, share, wherever you're seeing this, make sure your loved ones have, have it that they can check their own profiles and if it applies, get it to them so that they have some actionable intel on exactly what to do next. I will see you on the inside. Thank you for listening to the Get Fundable podcast. Please leave comments because Merrill would love to read about your aha moments from this episode. 
And be sure to visit GetFundable.com to read our blog, get important links, join our community, and much, much more, like ordering Merrill's tell-all book that is changing the world, the new F word. And you got to tell your friends about this podcast, because we want them to get fundable too.